Hello again, my DIY loving friends, and welcome to Medicated Housewife DIY, where crafting and mental health come together. Get ready to make some epic high-end fall decor DIYs on a budget. We'll transform some Dollar Tree foam pumpkins into unbelievable upscale seasonal decor. So what are you waiting for? Let's go DIY together. For this first DIY, I'm using 12 wood rings and you can find some wood rings at Dollar Tree, but I will link these for you in the description box below. I use a piece of jute to tie the rings together kind of tightly and before I make a knot, I grab a small tree trunk or a branch from a pack of tree branches from Dollar Tree and I kind of squeeze that tree piece into the middle of the rings and I'm going to shape the rings around it to form a round pumpkin shape before I knot that jute. When I'm happy with the ring's shape, I carefully put some dabs of hot glue between the tree branch and the edge of the rings, adjusting that pumpkin shape even more as I go. I do end up using a good amount of the hot glue to really secure those rings standing up around that branch. And then I take the second tree branch piece and hot glue it to the first one so that I have a longer middle piece for my pumpkin stem. And to camouflage some of that hot glue peeking out at the top of my pumpkin shape, I grab some of these mini pine cones from Dollar Tree and I glue them randomly into the space between the stem and the rings to clean up my hot glue mess and keep it from showing. And this is my adorable little wood ring pumpkin. You can make these any size depending on the size of the wood rings. And I think they are a neutral, natural, woodsy addition to a tiered tray or a centerpiece. It has a really nice upscale rustic kind of vibe to it and it is super quick and easy to make. That's a winning DIY in my book. For this next DIY, I'm using a foam pumpkin from Dollar Tree that has definitely seen better days. I'm reusing it from a previous project and let me know in the comments if you can guess as to which one. I'm gonna cover it up with this thick jute from Amazon, which I will link for you below, but you can use the jute from Dollar Tree also. We're covering the entire pumpkin with jute, but we are covering it vertically instead of wrapping it around. So I'm gonna end up cutting many, many pieces of the jute, just about the length that I need to cover the pumpkin. I like to glue the jute down in sections because I feel like that helps keep all the lines kind of even. So I usually start on one side of the pumpkin and then go to the other side across and then in two quarters, just basically adjusting my lines as I go along. As I get to the last little sections, I try to use up the scraps of jute that I've already cut to fit into those leftover spaces on the pumpkin. As you can see me doing right here, it just feels less wasteful to use up those scrap pieces rather than to cut new pieces off of that jute roll. Now I have my pumpkin covered in the jute and I grab a piece of Dollar Tree faux leather and it's kind of a reddish brown color. It comes rolled in a box and I ended up cutting it into strips that were just about one inch wide. I cut 12 strips, I think. I wasn't sure how many I would need and I still had leftover faux leather for another project. I used some hot glue on the top edge and the bottom edge of each strip and then fold them over onto themselves so that all of those edges are a little bit thicker and the strip itself looks more like a leather strap, if that makes any, any sense to you. Um, I do this to all 12 strips and the heat from the hot glue does make the faux leather kind of curl up and get a little wonky, but if you stretch and pull on it a bit, you can straighten the glued strips enough so that that's not noticeable and they do start to look like leather straps. I want to stretch the leather straps from the bottom of the pumpkin along the indented part of the pumpkin ribs so that all of that extra leather is just hanging out at the top by the stem and we'll be using that later but for now I want to attach the leather onto all of those indented grooves to really emphasize them and as I said before the leather does have a bit of stretch to it I hot glue each leather strap all the way up to the side part of that pumpkin stem and I'm going to do that all the way around the entire pumpkin. Then I take one of the leftover leather straps and I begin wrapping it tightly around the big bunch of leather straps that are in the middle top of the pumpkin. By gathering them, they're going to start to resemble a pumpkin stem. That's what I'm going for. I secure the beginning and the end of the wrapped strap with some hot glue to secure it and keep it in place. 
Now I want my straps at the top to be fringier looking, if that makes any sense. So first I trim all the ends to be a little bit of a point and then I cut a slit down the middle of each one, about three quarters of the way down the strap. And I'm gonna do this on all of those straps in the bunch. I take the last remaining leftover strap and I cut it in half to make it thinner. And then I wrap that around my leather bunched stem above where that first one is wrapped just to further shape the straps into more of a pumpkin stemmed shape. I have these two wood leaf cutouts from a pack of wood cutouts from Dollar Tree and I string them onto some twine and loosely tie them around my stem. And lastly, I grab a piece of wired rope from Dollar Tree, wrap it around the stem once, and then using a pen, I wrap the wired rope around the pen to make two spiral shapes, like tendrils on a pumpkin stem. And this is my leather and jute pumpkin, and honestly, I love this pumpkin so much. The leather looks a lot more brown than the red color it's giving off on the video, and there is something so classic about leather and jute that just says high end to me. I think this pumpkin works beautifully in anyone's fall decor. Ooh, and here's another used pumpkin that's seen better days, but we're going to give it a second life. So first I take this foam pumpkin from Dollar Tree and using a scissors, I'm gonna poke a hole through the top into the hollow pumpkin. And then I take this white like chamois cloth from the automotive section at Dollar Tree and it has a fuzzy side and a velvet like side. I love these for cleaning my jewelry actually. They're also great for pillows because they're really soft. So with the velvet side out, I'm going to simply wrap this cloth around the pumpkin, tucking the excess fabric inside the hole at the top. And I'm not using any glue for this because I may reuse these things, but you can definitely use some glue to make this a little more secure if you want. I have this gold metallic leather cording I got at Amazon and I will link it for you below. I cut several pieces of it to fit around the pumpkin starting at that top hole and going around the bottom of the pumpkin to the other side and up again into that hole. I do this with several more pieces, wrapping them to emphasize the ribs in the pumpkin. And again, I'm not using any glue for this. I'm just tucking that cord into the hole. You could certainly use glue to make it tighter and more secure. Then I have this leftover craft paper pumpkin stem I made last year and I will link to the video below. I take that leftover stem and I cut around another piece of the cord to wrap loosely around the stem going down to the bottom of the stem and wrapping it a bunch of times at the bottom. Then I'm simply stuffing that wrap stem down into the top hole. And this is my white plush and gold pumpkin. And first of all, I love that plush white mixed with gold combo, but tell me this is not giving disco vibes right here. It's like, I can't unsee it, you know? But I do love the absolute simplicity of this glue-free recycled pumpkin. This next DIY begins with this gorgeous new pumpkin from Dollar Tree Plus, and frankly, all the texture and natural looking ribs on this pumpkin make it well worth the $3 price tag, but we're gonna make it even better. I wanted to paint over the orange, so first I did tape up the stem, but ended up taking that tape off because it was too hard to work with. I'm using Apple Barrel paint in the color Warm Buff, which I will link view below, and full disclosure, it did take three very generous coats of that warm buff paint to fully cover up the orange of this pumpkin, but that is okay. It is well worth the effort. So once the pumpkin dried, I grabbed my Folk Art Antique Wax, which I will link for you below, and a dry chip brush, and I begin distress painting over that warm buff paint. And I'm just applying as many layers of the wax as needed to achieve the effect that I'm looking for, which is kind of an aged wood kind of a look and I used a small dry detail brush to really push that wax along the indented ribs of the pumpkin and to emphasize all of the depth and to give it a lot of dimension. I cut apart a Dollar Tree fall leaf pick and used some hot glue to attach three of the fall leaves to the pumpkin underneath the existing stem, which I did darken that stem with some antique wax off camera. After I attached the leaves, I attached a small bunch of the fall berries as well to add some color. And this is my wood painted fall pumpkin and all it took was a couple of coats of paint and antique wax to really transform this $3 pumpkin into something much more upscale. This pumpkin fits right in with all my fall decor and I absolutely love it. But as usual, I wanna know what you think. Let me know in the comments which one of these Dollar Tree epic fall decor on a budget DIYs was your favorite and why. I love hearing from all of you. 
And if you've enjoyed this DIY video, there's another one waiting for you. Just click that link on your screen for more medicated housewife DIYs. Thanks for watching. And until next time, my name is Sarah. I'm the medicated housewife and crafting is my medication.